Live from Los Angeles, it's theCUBE. Covering Open Source Summit North America 2017. Brought to you by the Linux Foundation and Red Hat. Okay, welcome back everyone. Live here in Los Angeles, California for the Cube's exclusive coverage of Open Source Summit in North America. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Stu Miniman. Our next guest is Patrick Chenazan, who is the member of the technical staff at Docker, also on the governing board of the Cloud Native Compute Foundation, also known as CNCF, which is the hottest part of the open source community right now. It's very fashionable, very trendy. A lot of people are on the bandwagon. A lot of contribution going on. Welcome back to theCUBE, great to see you. Hey, thanks, John and Stu. It's, it's really good to be back on theCUBE. So we, you guys, just, Docker's been such a great company to follow since the beginning and birth of Docker um, to, um, well, the transformation from dot .cloud to Docker, uh, and it's just a great team. We really highly, a lot of respect for you guys, congratulations. But the CNCF right now is the hottest thing. There's more platinum sponsors than I think, maybe members, I don't know. But it seems to be very hot. Industry loves it, developers going crazy about it. Why is CNCF so hot? What's your, what's your perspective on that? So what we're seeing right now is really the uh, realization of uh, adoption of containers. Uh, I, we talked about it two years ago. <laughs> it was very early and uh, people were starting to use Docker and discovering containers. Today they're really putting them in production and what we see at Docker with our customer base is that they're using it more and more to modernize traditional applications. So we see tremendous uh, use of containers everywhere uh, in enterprises, and uh, the rise of CNCF is tied to that. Uh, I think we're seeing more and more developers joining the bandwagon, more and more systems being built based on containers, uh, and at Docker we're playing a big role into that. Yeah. How are you guys feeling? Oh, so yeah, so Patrick, you know, for a couple of years it was like, you know, the chant was Docker, Docker, Docker. Um, and sometimes people say, well, they say, oh, Kubernetes is where the hotness is. Well, underneath that there's containers, and a lot of those containers, you know, <laughs> Docker's involved there. Maybe you can help us understand the nuance a little bit as, as the Kubernetes wave has grown. Sure, there was the kind of Mesos, Docker Swarm, Kubernetes, you know, war, if you will, there. Um, but, you know, what, what has this meant for Docker? What are you seeing from your customers? And and uh, you know, give us the update on, on kind of Docker itself. We'll probably need to get into some of the Moby stuff too as we get into the interview. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, oh, that's a big question. Yeah. So let, let's start with the beginning. When uh, when um, enterprises adopt containers, what happens is that usually it starts with developers who are adopting uh, containers with Docker. So they download Docker for their Windows machine or for their Mac or on Linux. They start containerizing their applications. Uh, what we see is more and more also enterprise developers modernizing existing applications by dockerizing them. And then the next step is they want to put that into production. And for that you need a whole system. So at Docker we have like two systems. We have Docker CE and Docker E, our enterprise version that has role-based access control secrets and all that good stuff. Uh, there are lots of different components that you need uh, in order to have a production container system. Uh, and so Kubernetes, uh, the orchestration engine, is one piece of that. Uh, at Docker, we have SwarmKit. Uh, but there are lots of other different components and lots of different layers to that system. So you have the infrastructure layer uh, that you're using to uh, deploy that inside the firewall or in different cloud providers. Many different solutions there. Uh, at Docker we have one that is called InfraKit that we're using in our editions to deploy it any, everywhere. Uh, then on top of that you need uh, some version of Linux. Uh, so uh, at um, DockerCon uh, in, in April, we uh, released a project called Linux Kit that helps you do that. On top of that, you need a container runtime. And uh, so traditionally it's been Docker. Uh, right now we... Um, refactored the Docker code base to extract uh, a core uh, runtime component that's called ContainerD that we donated to CNCF. And right. So ContainerD right now is nearing uh, 1.0 beta. So it will be 1.0 pretty soon. Uh, and then on top of that, you need an orchestration engine. So Docker EE comes with its own orchestration based on Swarm. Uh, Kubernetes is another orchestration choice that lots of people like. And Kubernetes behind the scenes is using Docker. And right now we are working very closely with the Kubernetes uh, community to implement uh, CRI container D. So CRI is the container runtime interface uh, in Kubernetes that lets you plug different engines. 
uh, to plug Container D uh, in the place of Docker in there. Yeah, there, there's a lot of pieces in, in, in here. Uh, we had some interviews yesterday talking about the Open Container Initiative, or OCI, yep. uh, which really made sure we've got the 1.0 version of that done, so what container format? Seems like we're in agreement. We're not fighting over that kind of piece anymore. Um, right, the, from the Kubernetes community, I heard loud and clear, they're like, we've got Container D, we've kind of got what we want, we're happy, it's open source, we're going. Uh, we were at DockerCon when you announced Moby, uh, which is kind of open source, and I think it, it felt like we were still kind of figuring out all those pieces. Maybe give us the update yeah. as to, you know, Moby, you're talking here at the open source show, you talked a little bit about CE and EE being the productized versions, but I, you know, part of it is what we used to think of as Docker is now Moby, uh, and the, that kind of, the company Docker versus the project, you, you kind of tease those apart a little yes, bit, right? Yes, exactly, and actually that's what I came uh, here at the Open Source Summit to talk about, to give people an update on the Moby project. So what we announced uh, back in April is uh, the launch of the Moby project, which is uh, the end of a two-year refactoring of the Docker code base into different components. So all these components of the stack that I told you about, uh, we just teased them out uh, from the Docker code base so that it's a modular set of uh, components that you can assemble together. And Moby is, uh, Moby is three things. Uh, it's an open source project where people can collaborate to build container-based systems. Uh, it's also a tool that we're using to assemble our component into uh, what we call Moby Core, which is the upstream of the Docker product. Uh, and then it's also a set of lots of components, uh, like a ContainerD, LinuxKit, InfraKit, Notary, and all the projects I talked about. One of the things we started doing since April as well is we started uh, proposing to donate some of these component projects to CNCF. So ContainerD is already part of CNCF now. Uh, recently, this summer, uh, we proposed InfraKit and they think it's a little bit too early uh, for donation uh, because they want to see uh, other uh, different projects in there. Uh, and right now we're in the process of donating uh, and proposing Notary, so there's an active discussion in there, and I hope that uh, the vote will happen probably next week or something like that. So Notary is a component that we're using for Docker Content Trust, and uh, we think that this could be used in lots of different uh, cloud-native systems, so it, it really has its place into the CNCF So ecosystem. identity component for the container management, or what specifically is that going to address? So Notary is the, is the piece that we're using in Docker Content Trust uh, to, okay. uh, uh, to, to, to make sure that you can trust the images that you built, assign signatures to them, uh, be able to revoke all these signatures, all the kind of features that yeah. uh, our enterprise uh, customers love in Docker EE. It's kind of like Stu and me on Twitter. He's verified. I'm not. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so maybe you, <laughs> you should get to that. <laughs> I'll go to Docker for my trust. No, seriously. This is, but this is important because now this is a stamp of approval, if you will, that the community can look to. Yeah, definitely. So it's something that we implement in Docker, and now people building other container systems will be able to use it. And so Mubi uh, saw a lot of traction for its different projects. Some of them are going to CNCF, some of them are growing by themselves. Uh, and on the Docker side, uh, we made some progress productizing all that with uh, Docker CE and Docker EE. Uh, we had a 1706 launch of uh, Docker EE recently with lots of new role-based access control uh, uh, controls for enterprises. Uh, who are adopting it uh, essentially to modernize their traditional apps. All right, so take us through uh, kind of personal question. You were just at a board meeting with the CNCF. Yeah. Did everyone show up? Were people calling in? Did everyone fly in? Or? I think Alexi, uh, Alexi Richardson was the only one there, maybe two people on the phone. Was Sam Ramjay there? Uh, uh, Sam, Sam was not there either, uh, but uh, Aparna was uh, standing for him. So the room was full, and uh, to me it's really an impressive achievement uh, two years after we helped start the CNCF, the first meetings were just 10, 15 people at Google uh, yeah. deciding to create this, uh, this foundation. And today, maybe we were 20 or 30 people around the table and everybody well, was Well, even before that Google meeting, we were covering the KubeCon, Kubernetes movement early on uh, from your events. So I think out at DockerCon and uh, some of the Linux Foundation events, the early momentum, we were there, Stu, President Creation. Then it became the CNCF when they decided, hey, why don't we take the Cloud Native Foundation? Yep. So it's interesting to be seeing the growth from the beginning. And it's unique to have that opportunity to be on the front lines of 
an organically developing group. It wasn't really built, build a table come. This was a, a realization. It was a realization and also a concerted effort to build something together to show, uh, to show customers where, where this um, container-based systems were going in terms of architecture. What were the factors besides, I mean obviously Docker was a big driver, you guys were, and notably you should get the credit for you know, really pioneering the space, but what was the drivers for this, this coalescing and this, this uh, call to arms, if you will, or this organic formation of CNCF? What were the key drivers in your mind? Obviously containers is one, what were the other ones? Yeah, to me containers is a big one because when you're starting to design your system with containers in mind, uh, you need to change lots of things, how you're building them and things like that that and how you're architecting things together. Uh, and there were lots of questions about how do you do load balancing in that kind of system, uh, how do you do uh, uh, monitoring, uh, how do you do tracing. And so the CNCF was assembled so that all these components have a place where we can show interoperability between them. And so Docker is part of that, Mesos is part of that, uh, as well as Kubernetes. Uh, and so there, there's a big uh, interoper interoperability work that's happening in there. We had a report in the board meeting today about the new CI initiative that tests different CNCF projects together. What's uh, CI? Oh, sorry, uh, continuous integration. Okay, got it, yeah. So there's a continuous integration Not converged system. infrastructure, it's just do and I oh, always you're right, yeah. You know, we always get acronymed up. But Chris Anizik was talking yesterday about the graduation path. Um, still waiting to see something graduate from the process. Yeah. What's going to graduate first? Any bets? What's the betting? What's some of the betting going on? Do you guys actually make bets? And are there is there fantasy drafting going on? Or you know, I, <laughs> fantasy? Yeah. I, I I don't think that really matters. Yeah. What matters is really adoption of the components. Hey, okay, so what's um, happening on the graduation scale? What's coming out of the wood? What's next? What's going to graduate first? Uh, so one thing I'm curious about is whether Container D may graduate uh, because it's it's kind of mature now. It's reaching 1.0 with a CRI Container D and soon integration in Docker, it may be a good candidate for graduation. Uh, for the others, I don't know uh, which ones would be first into uh, the yeah, graduation yeah. process. Well, it's, we know it's a high bar, for sure. Yeah. And, and Patrick, the stuff that's getting mature, what about some of the roadmap there from Docker and from the CNCF, something like serverless, containers for you know, first generation so, you know, you know, are going to be important. We, we had some interviews this week talking about, well, today it might be containers, we'll see in the future where serverless and open FAS, uh, things yep. like that go. So how does, how does that whole fit in? Can you give us kind of the Docker the CNCF view on that. Sure, uh, so let's talk about the CNCF uh, view first. Uh, CNCF is working on lots of different areas uh, where there needs to be more definition about uh, what cloud native means for storage, for example, with a CSI initiative, container storage interface, uh, CNI, container networking interface, uh, and then there's a working group for CI, so which is about integrating all these projects together, but the working group I'm most interested in is the serverless one. Uh, so we have a Docker rep at the serverless working group and there we're trying to define what does a portable serverless stack looks like yeah. and at Docker we're naturally interested in this. Of course, because, uh, serverless is a beautiful thing. Yeah, and I most mean, of these projects are running on top of Docker, so open fast. All right, so I got to ask you Patrick, because yeah. we love serverless. I have a love-hate relationship with the word serverless because technically it's a beautiful thing, but it's actually there's servers involved. But I'm an old school, so I kind of look at it differently. But the younger generation, they want infrastructure as code. This is a clear, obvious thing. It was once a dream, but now it's becoming a reality. What's your, what's your position on that? Where is it on the progress bar? How close are we to serverless? Uh, I'd say there's uh, initial adoption of serverless uh, on one of the few stacks that exist out there today. Uh, so you have the hosted services, the SaaS services from uh, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. Uh, where I'm more interested, and I think customers are kind of looking for that, is a portable way of doing that. So for example, installing that on top of Docker Platform, so that's what projects like OpenFast uh, is doing. Uh, and right now, I think we're really in the stage of discussions within CNCF of what a portable serverless layer would look like so that you could focus on your code, but be able to deploy that on-prem, on top of Docker, or uh, in different cloud providers. So that portability aspect to me is very important there, and I think it's important for customers as well. 
Uh, to me, also, I'm an old timer as well. <laughs> I used to pitch a platform as a service at the beginning of it with Google App Engine many years ago. Yeah. Uh, and to me, it's kind of a, a feeling of deja vu. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're kind of reinventing that, but with containers and in a much yeah. more portable way. Yeah, the beautiful thing about being an old timer um, and as we get to look back and not so much to the young kids get off my lawn, kind of we, we had to walk to school with bare feet in the snow, uh, build our own libraries. I and mean, I was just talking to Eileen, she's like, oh my, my low level class was C and my high level class was Python. I'm like, our low level class was machine code. Uh, you know, exactly and the high level was, wasn't even C yet. You know, I was like. So, so you know. Yesterday at the party I was discussing with uh, one of the IBM engineers who's working on Linux and containers on mainframe frame, uh, and we were talking about GCL, uh, and that's exactly <laughs> the feeling that we got. Like we're getting higher yeah. up in the stack, and I think for modern developers, it really helped them. It's a beautiful thing right now. I mean, if I was, I mean, just think about the young guns that are coming up. This is a beautiful library of options now. I mean, 90% of the code is leverageable. I mean, that's like uh, unbelievable. So it really allows the creativity of the developer to be a lot more about structural engineering the code base rather than just being very creative on the, the 10 to 20% of real intellectual property they can bring to the table. Yeah, and I would add something. It's really about creating value as opposed to focusing on building infrastructure. So when, when we're getting up yeah. the stack, and serverless is an example yeah. of that, uh, it's really about creating value for enterprises and yeah. that's what developers are about. Yeah, when you start dreaming in code, you know you're, you're doing good. Patrick, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE and congratulations on all the success with CNCF. Certainly, Docker, you guys continue to impress and do a great job. I know there's some changes over there. We're looking for some of the, the cool stuff graduating out of CNCF, more Docker container uh, goodness from you guys. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. it I'm John Furrier, live in Los Angeles, California for the Open Source Summit North America coverage from theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman, back with more after this short break.